Hi, I am Dr. Swarjla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Today, we are going to find the correlation between AMH, anti-mullerian hormone, AFC, antral follicle count, and see how the ovarian response is to treatments that are given for infertility. So, we are going to look at a few important points today. How is it that an egg is growing inside the ovary? At what stage of egg development is AMH being released? And when are we doing this antral follicular count? How are we doing it? And what is the normal value of AMH which should be there? And especially when you are trying for pregnancy. And finally, we'll look at what studies are saying about the correlation between AMH, antral follicular count and your ovarian reserve as in how are you going to respond to stimulation as well according to your age. Before beginning, let's try to understand how eggs mature inside the follicles. Of course, we've made a lot of videos explaining about how all the eggs that a woman will ever have in her ovaries, whether it is ovulating or not, are already present in the woman, in a girl child, when she is in her mother's womb. So when you are growing inside your mother's uterus as a girl itself, your oocytes are being decided, the numbers are being decided, there are millions and after you are born also, the numbers remain in millions. Of course, few millions are degenerating, but a few millions are also going ahead into your adult life. One only is releasing every month. So look at the picture very carefully. You will see that eggs are divided uh, into a lot of types. They are all in the primordial uh, stage that you see in the picture. And as they are selected every month, as they respond to the hormones, they grow through these different stages of development, which are early primary, late primary, preantral follicular uh, stage, small antral follicular stage, large antral follicle and pre-ovulatory follicle. Remember the pre-modial follicles are sleeping and this extreme end pre-ovulatory follicle is the one that is going to ovulate and has a chance of fertilization and forming a baby. So AMH or anti-mullerian hormone is a substance which is produced by the granulosa cells in the follicles as in every follicle has a lot of cells inside it inside of which is there is an egg. These granulosa cells produce these AMH hormones. So it's first made in the primary follicles which are uh, actually advancing from the primordial follicle stage. I told you primordial stage they are sleeping kind of. When they are advancing to the primary follicle stage that's when they begin to release the AMH. At this stage the follicles are microscopic and they cannot be seen in the ultrasound. AMH production is highest when the follicles are in preantral or small antral stages. So they have to be less than 4 mm in diameter to be able to produce AMH as in there is a correlation if they are 4 mm they are called as preantral and small antral follicle stage and that's when they are producing the hormone. Now this production decreases and also stops as the follicle grows. Any follicle that is more than 8 mm in diameter stops production of AMH. Therefore levels are fairly constant and AMH test can be done on any day of your menstrual cycle. So you've understood that. Now AMH can be performed on any stage I have said. When it's uh, about infertility that we're talking, it's also related to your age as well. So let's look at the interpretation for women under 35. We we'll look at AMH uh, levels which are blood levels and they are measured in NG per ml, nanograms per milliliter. It could differ in different labs but I'm talking about NG per ml. So let's look at the values very closely. We we'll look at the values and then we'll see who are these patients? How do we correlate the values? So if it is 4 nanograms per milliliter and over, it means that uh, you could have PCOS. So it's very high and uh, you could be a PCOS patient. If it is between 1.5 to 4 nanograms per milliliter, then it's normal. Understood? 1.5 to 4. If it is 1.0 to 1.5 nanograms per milliliter, it's a low range. It is not termed as a very low range, but it's a low range value. If it is 0.5 to 1 nanograms per milliliter, it is low. So this is where the treatments uh, should be hastened. If it is less than 0.5 nanograms per milliliter, it is considered as very low. And it also means that your response to stimulation hormones, your response to treatments will also be compromised or not good and uh, whatever treatments you are planning to do, it's better if you hasten the procedure and get it done fast. Antral follicular scan is also something that is done on day 2 or day 3 of your period to see how many 
antral follicles are selected in the ovaries out of which of course only one is going to ovulate but these antral follicle also give us an estimate of your ovarian reserve this correlated with amh is a very good tool for clinicians fertility specialists to then give you the treatment options if you look at this study which was uh, a very recent study the conclusion from this study which is a huge systematic uh, review or meta analysis a meta analysis when many many research case studies are taken and then conclusions are drawn this study very clearly tells us that the amh and antral follicular count are a very good uh, estimate of your ovarian reserve and then doctors can decide what treatment options to offer for you if you wish to understand more about these two important things amh and afc that i've talked about please feel free to contact us thank you a lot of effort has gone into making this video please like and subscribe us thank you